Hello everyone. Today we are going to start the chapter of class 11 from Hornbill titled The Ailing Planet, The Green Movement's Role, written by Nani Palkiwala. This, this is an article that was written by Nani Palkiwala and published in the Indian Express on 24th November 1994. The issues that he raised regarding the declining health of the earth continue to have relevance. So as I said, this article, it is a said commentary on the gradual deterioration of Earth's environment. Our planet, it is no longer a pleasant place to live in. Fisheries, forests, grasslands and croplands need to be preserved and protected. The article suggests that we should try to limit the rise in population and stop the perpetuation of poverty. The Green Movement, started in 1972, is the only hope for the survival of this planet as well as that of the human race. So this chapter, it talks about uh, the Green Movement that was started nearly 25 years ago uh, from 1994 and it spread so quickly in world history and it was the world's first nationwide Green Party that was founded in New Zealand. So let us begin with the reading of the chapter. One cannot recall any movement in world history which has gripped the imagination of the entire human race so completely and so rapidly as the Green Movement which started nearly 25 years ago. In 1972, the world's first nationwide Green Party was founded in New Zealand. Since then, the movement has not looked back. So as I said, the chapter, it is an article that was published in the newspaper, the Indian Express on November 24, 1994. And uh, writer Nani Palkiwala wrote about the declining health condition of Earth. He also uh, talked about green movement, as I said, which started nearly 25 years ago from 1994 and uh, which spread so quickly in world history. And it was the first nationwide green party that was founded in New Zealand in 1972. We have shifted one hopes irrevocably from the mechanistic view to a holistic and ecological view of the world. It is a shift in human perceptions as revolutionary as that revolutionary means evolving a complete change as that introduced by Copernicus who taught mankind in the 16th century that the earth and the other planets revolved around the sun for the first time in human history there is a glowing worldwide consciousness means awareness that the earth itself is a living organism means it's a living being an enormous being of which we are parts it has its own metabolic needs means uh, the needs of a living organism that enables them to have a chemical process that causes food to be used for growth and energy so uh, it has its own metabolic needs and vital processes which need to be respected and preserved. So here what Nani Palkewala says, he says that for some time our views have shifted from seeing earth and its resources as irreversible to complete opposite. We now understand that our resources need to be conversed for future generations. Copernicus, he taught mankind how the earth and other planets revolve around the sun and it was a complete change which evolved human perception. Now the earth is seen as a living organism of which we are an integral part. Earth has its own metabolism and vital needs which humans should respect and preserve. The earth's vital signs reveal a patient in declining health. We have begun to realize our ethical obligations to be good stewards, means caretakers, of the planet and responsible trustees of the legacy to future generation. So, 
writer says that earth is now like a patient whose health is declining and we as human beings are now realizing our duty to be good managers caretakers of the planet and to be responsible trustees to conserve the environment so that we can pass a legacy to the future generations the concept of sustainable development sustainable development means economic development without depletion of natural resources sustainable development was popularized in 1987 by the world commission on environment and development in its report it defined the idea as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs that is without stripping the natural world of resources future generations would need so in these lines the author he explains the concept of sustainable uh, development or growth of 1987 which says that meets the wants of the current time without losing the ability of the upcoming generations to meet their needs and fulfill them further he says that we must utilize the natural resources in such a way that we fulfill our needs as well as conserve these resources for the upcoming generation uh in simple words uh, he wants to say that uh it is a type of development sustainable development is a type of development that meets the needs of the present generation I mean like we can say we uh, we are the present generation without wasting or compromising with natural resources so that future generations can meet their needs in the sense we should use the resources in such a way that we uh, fulfill our needs also and we keep these resources preserve these resources for our future generation also so that they can also meet their needs in the zoo at lusaka zambia there is a cage where the notice reads the world's most dangerous animal inside the cage there is no animal but a mirror where you see yourself thanks to the efforts of a number of agencies in different countries a new awareness has dawned upon the most dangerous animal in the world he has realized the wisdom of shifting from a system based on domination to one based on partnership so here uh, what writer says that in a cage in zoo in lusaka zambia there uh, a notice was there outside the cage which read the world's most dangerous animal and inside the cage was a mirror that depicted that humans are the world's most dangerous animals now with the efforts of new agencies in the world humans are seen as the most dangerous animal and they have realized the importance of shifting to a new system based on partnership earlier they uh, thought that uh, this earth and the things that are there the natural things uh, which are present on the earth he is the sole owner of that but now his wisdom his knowledge his understanding it has shifted from system based of on domination to one based on partnership now he believes that this this thing it is uh, in the partnership means that he has to uh, share all these things with other uh, living creatures on this earth scientists have cataloged catalog means classified or listed about 1.4 million living species with which mankind shares the earth estimates vary widely as regards the still uncatalogued living species biologists reckon reckon means calculate that about 3 to 100 million other living species still languish languish means remain unnamed 
in ignominious darkness ignominious darkness means unknown darkness means we are uh, unknown to those creatures which are still uh, not listed in the list of scientists they have not been catalogued they are uncatalogued so nani palki wala he says that humans they share the earth with about 1.4 million living species according to the classification of scientists biologists have calculated that there are still millions of other species which are yet not classified due to their weakness or due to the lack of knowledge about them or they are living in uh, such uh, areas or you can say the unknown places where the scientists they have not reached one of the early international commissions which dealt interalia interalia means among other things with the question of ecology and environment was the brant commission which had a distinguished indian as one of its members mr l k jha so brant commission was one of the early international commissions who dealt with questions of ecology and environment and they commissioned mr l k jha as one of their commission members who was an indian citizen the first brant report raised the question are uh, we to leave our successors a scorched scorched means dried burnt planet of advancing deserts impoverished landscapes means poor landscapes and ailing environment ailing means sick environment so in the first report of this brand commission a question was raised that are we going to leave a burnt planet with aided deserts poor landscapes and a poor environment for our future generations <clears throat> uh students uh, we all agree with the view that is contained in this statement because there is every likelihood of such an eventuality occurring in future means such situation can arise in future and there are solid reasons behind this apprehension our resources are limited and they will not last indefinitely if we go on consuming them indiscriminately fisheries forests grasslands and croplands they form the basis of the global economic system they supply us food and raw materials for industry increasing population has put a severe pressure on them on these uh, economic system excessive use of these resources have impaired their productivity in large areas of the world these systems have reached an unsustainable level the results are awful and disastrous the fisheries they will collapse forests will disappear grasslands will become barren wastelands and croplands will lose their fertility decimation of forests will increase dryness and heat and there will be less rainfall hence there is a possibility of the earth becoming an overheated place full of increasing deserts poor landscapes and ailing environment in future so this statement it uh, stands true if we are going to uh, use the resources Uh, limitless or uh, we are not going to uh, conserve them then definitely our future generation is going to see such kind of a world mr lester r brown in his thoughtful book the global economic prospect points out that the earth's principal biological systems are four they are very important mark them so which are the four Uh, principal biological system of earth it is fisheries forests grasslands and crop plants i just discussed in the last paragraph so these four things are very important and they form the foundation of the global economic system in addition to supplying our food means these four biological system uh what they do they supply food to us besides that 
these four systems provide virtually all the raw materials for industry except minerals and petroleum derived synthetics synthetics means artificial substance in large areas of the world human claims on these systems are reaching an unsustainable level means it is not possible to replace we are using the things to an extent that we cannot uh, replace them with anything else a point where the productivity is being impaired when this happens fisheries collapse forests disappear grasslands are converted into barren wastelands and croplands deteriorate in a protein conscious and protein hungry world overfishing is common every day in poor countries local forests are being decimated means they are reducing in number in order to procure firewood for cooking in some places firewood has become so expensive that what goes uh, under the pot now costs more than what goes inside it since the tropical forest is in the words of dr meyer the power house of evolution several species of life face extinction as a result of its destruction so in this paragraph what we have read there are four biological system that form the foundation of the global economic system namely fisheries grasslands forest and croplands and they provide food and raw material for industry except for minerals and synthetics and these um, four systems have reached an unsustainable point where their productivity has impaired and with because of which fisheries they will collapse forest will slowly disappear grasslands will turn into barren wasteland and croplands will become worse uh overfishing is very common nowadays where people are becoming protein conscious means people they know that protein is very important for health and uh, it should be there in their diet so uh, because of this overfishing has become very common in poor countries forests are being cut down on a large scale to obtain wood for cooking uh, you all must be knowing since we are talking uh this uh, article it was written in 1994 and during those days during those years obviously lot of people they cook they cook food on using these uh, wood so at that time number of trees or number of forests they were uh, trees were cut and as a result uh, the forest they disappeared now uh, in today's time of we i mean the system of uh, gas or this lpg cylinder and all it has reached to the rural areas but uh, in 1990s people were com- uh, village people were completely dependent on wood for cooking now in some areas firewood uh, is more costly than food and that is why it says that what goes under the pot means the wood it now cost more than what goes inside it mean what is being cooked inside the pot is uh, not that expensive as the firewood which is needed for it to be cooked is expensive many species they are under destruction in tropical forest it has been well said that forest precede mankind deserts follow the world's ancient patrimony of tropical forest is now eroding at the rate of 40 to 50 million acres a year so line says that it is well said that forest precede mankind deserts follow means forest and deserts come uh, first in order in comparison to humans in the sense that when mankind was not there forest were, was there when mankind appeared on earth desert followed means uh, for our use we started cutting down trees the forest they uh, became uh, and, i mean they started depleting so uh, after the coming of humans forest they started depleting and deserts were being created 
now the world's ancient patrimony patrimony means the property that is inherited from father or ancestor so we have inherited this patrimony patrimony of tropical forest tropical forest means they are the hot and humid areas the forest in hot and humid area it is now eroding it means disappearing at the rate of 40 to 50 million acres a year and the growing use of dung of burning deprives the soil of an important natural fertilizer so the ancient inheritance of tropical forest it is constantly wearing away at the rate of 40 to 50 million acres a year and also the burning of dung is preventing the soil to become natural fertilizer means um, obviously you know that uh, if you have been to rural areas the um, dung of animals is used i mean it is decomposed and it is used as a fertilizer but uh, uh, people they make um, cakes out of them the uh, cow dung cakes that are used for uh, burning so it is depriving the soil of an important natural fertilizer the world bank estimates that a five fold increase in the rate of forest planting is needed to cope with the expected fuel wood demand in the year 2000 so uh, to meet the need of fuel wood demand there is a need to increase the rate of forest plantation by five fold by the year 2020 it is the estimate of world bank james spet the president of the world resources institute said the other day we were saying that we are losing the forest and at an acre a second but it is much closer to an acre and a half to a second so he said that we are losing the forest closer to an acre and a half to a second and not uh, at an acre a second means we are losing a forest uh, at a very fast rate Article forty eight A of the Constitution of India provides that the state shall endeavour to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forests and wildlife of the country. But what causes endless anguish, means suffering, is the fact that laws are never respected nor enforced in India. So the Article forty eight A of constitution of india what it states that uh, the state should try to protect and improve the environment and must protect the forest and wildlife of the country but the painful fact is that laws are not followed in india you all know i can give you example like i mean you think that you are uh, now grown up and you can um, ride on scooty or bike or you can drive any vehicle before 18 means you think uh, that uh, i mean you can do anything and you uh, drive your vehicle you run it on road without following the laws and you some of you are not caught by the uh, i would say police men and uh, they leave you or they take something from you and say okay uh, don't do it next time so this shows that laws are not followed in our country rigorously uh, more examples are given over here for instance the constitution says that casteism untouchability and bonded labor shall be abolished but they flourish shamelessly even after 44 years of the operation of the constitution so you must be knowing all these thing you have studied in your history subject or <clears throat> uh, social science in the previous class that is in 10th 9th that this, these things they have been abolished according to the indian constitution but still they are followed shamelessly and uh, A recent report of a parliament's estimates committee has highlighted the near catastrophic depletion of India's forest over the last four decades. Means, uh, over the last four decades, India is losing forest at a harmful rate of three point seven millions of acre uh, millions acres per year, as per the reports of the parliament's estimate committee.
large areas officially designated as forest land are being are already virtually treeless the actual loss of forests is estimated to be about 8 times the rate indicated by government statistics so the large areas of forest land is treeless and what is the actual loss the estimate committee it said that 3.7 million acres a year but what is the actual loss it is estimated to be 8 times the rate given by the government statistic means you can uh, say that 3.7 million an acre you can multiply it by 8 and you will get to know the exact loss of the forest in a country so it is painful but it is true as i said that the laws they are neither respected nor enforced in india and uh, examples were there from everyday life like everyone is conversant with the rule of the road as i talked just now but still there are cases of wrong overtaking lane jumping signal jumping over speeding and road rage and our law insists on compulsory elementary education up to the age of 14 yet we find many illiterate teenager boys or girls of this age loitering around in lanes or employed in petty jobs in roadside restaurants or as domestic servants our constitution insists on the protection and improvement of the environment the states have been given the responsibility of protecting uh, forests and wildlife but forests they are being cut and illegal shooting of wildlife goes on similarly there are laws regarding abolishing casteism untouchability and bonded labor but these remain on paper and in actual life they are never put into practice hence it can be concluded that laws are neither respected nor enforced in india i hope you understood what that uh, line of article meant article 48a which said that the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forests and wildlife of the country but the suffering the pain is that laws are never respected nor enforced in india okay uh, well <coughs> stop here and continue in the next video thank you